current setting. See what you get there. If you don't get a reading or if the current is low, then move to the lower current setting. DMMs also come in a bench type device. This is a bench DMM. Its operation is essentially the same as this one. It has some additional capabilities, none of which will be really important to us in this course. You still have a COM port. You still have a voltage or ohm port. You still are able to select a DC voltage measurement, a DC current measurement or a resistance, or an AC or alternating current or sinusoidal voltage or an AC current. We won't worry about this bottom row at the moment. So for this particular one, if I want to measure a voltage, I plug these leads in this way, push the V button, and you'll notice that it's displaying something in millivolts. It's trying to measure a voltage. In order to measure a resistance, I leave these as is. Now you'll see that it's trying to measure something in mega ohms. Since there's no connection between these, what it's giving me is an overload condition. It means that the resistance between these two leads is essentially infinite as far as the DMM can tell. If I touch these together, I have no resistance, essentially, so I end up with about 0.16 ohms. Okay, I'm shorting these out. I have very low resistance between these two terminals. If I want to measure a current, I select this and I move this to the appropriate current terminal. Again, there's one that's for high current, one that's for low current. Make sure you use the appropriate one. Always start with a high current measurement if you have any chance at all that you're planning on blowing out the fuse that's in this low current device. I want to emphasize how the DMM is connected to circuit elements in order to make the various types of measurements that we will be using. To use the DMM as an ohmmeter, we need to connect the DMM terminals to the terminals of the device whose resistance is being measured. So in essence, the DMM is being placed in what is called parallel with the circuit element. The same connections are used with the DMM as a voltmeter. The two terminals of the DMM are connected across the terminals of the device whose voltage difference is being measured. The difference is that when the DMM is being used as an ammeter, the DMM is placed in what is called series with the circuit element. So current comes in one side, goes through the DMM, which is represented by the circle with the A in it, and then passes through the circuit element. Okay, so any current entering the DMM has to leave the DMM and then enter the circuit element whose current is being measured. Now the EE board also contains a number of the DMM's capabilities. For example, you can measure a voltage difference. That is done with these four V meter MTR channels. V meter 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay. So I can measure voltage with any one of these. However, these voltages are all relative to this same ground, which is on these pins that are labeled with a little downward arrow. Remember that on our other DMMs, we had two leads, the COM and then the voltage lead. For this particular board, the COM is always at ground. So if you want to measure a voltage difference that's not relative to ground, you need to measure two voltages and take the difference. I'll demonstrate that later on after we've talked about power supplies. Right now, what I want to do is demonstrate some resistance measurements. As I mentioned previously, two holes in the same row are electrically connected. They should have no resistance difference. Now, the EE board does not have a resistance measurement built in, so I'm going to use my handheld DMM to measure resistances. So if I connect across two holes that are in the same row, change this to a resistance measurement, make sure that the leads are plugged in, I have a 0.2 to 0.3 ohm resistance between the two holes. Now if I check two different rows, I will have essentially an infinite resistance. This particular DMM, rather than displaying an OL for overload, as the bench DMM did, flashes. 
this flashing four means that this is a resistance that's higher than this device can measure, so these two holes are isolated from one another. Now I have a nominal 100 kilo ohm resistor here. If I want to measure the resistance across that resistor, what I can do is plug it into these holes. Now I'm measuring the resistance between the two terminals of this resistance. This is supposedly 100 kilo ohms. That is the nominal resistance or the in name only resistance. It's actually 98 to 98.1 kilo ohms. Now you don't necessarily have to plug in the resistor into the breadboard in order to measure the resistance. It's perfectly all right to put the resistor between these two alligator clips. Now I'm doing something extremely bad. I'm now reading 80 kilo ohms to 81 kilo ohms. Notice the way that I'm holding this. I'm actually touching the met metal on both ends of the resistors with my fingers. I'm putting myself in this resistive network. So part of this resistance is because I can actually transmit electricity through my body from one hand to the other. Make sure if you're using this that you don't touch the resistor so that you get a good consistent measurement of the resistance. Now I want to show you some practical power supplies. Power supplies come in a number of different flavors. This power supply here, for example, is a bench power supply that puts out DC power. It puts out voltages and currents which are constant with time. And in fact, there are three different power supplies on this device. These two terminals are one power supply, these two are another, and this is a third. This power supply here is controlled by these knobs which you can use to adjust voltage and current. This is also an adjustable power supply which is controlled by these knobs which control the voltage and current at these terminals. These two terminals are not adjustable. They provide a fixed power supply that has a fixed 5 volts with up to 3 amperes. Now, if I want to apply power to something, I can connect some leads to this terminal and this terminal and let me use my DMM to measure the voltage difference. This will be my high voltage, so I'll plug that into the red or V terminal of my DMM. This is my low voltage. It goes to the COM port or the low voltage port of the DMM. Okay. So now I can use the DMM to measure voltage if I increase the voltage knob, I'm putting out about 2.1 volts, I'm measuring about 2.1 volts on the DMM. So this knob allows me to change the voltage that is applied across these terminals. Now I can also vary the current and in fact this device allows me to display either the volts or the amps, the current. A DMM acting as a volt meter works approximately as an open circuit. There will be no current going through the voltmeter that's indicated by zero amps here. So depending on what position this switch is in, I'm displaying either amps or volts on this device. Operation of this one is the same. This is the same except that it will always attempt to put out five volts. This power supply here is slightly different. We won't use this one until roughly midway through the semester. This is a function generator. What it does is puts out sig signals that vary with time. You can change the frequency of the signal, you can change the amplitude, and you can change the signal shape. It'll put out sinusoidal waves, triangular waves, and square waves. We'll talk about these types of signals quite extensively later in the class. The EE board provides the same functionality as both of these types of power supplies. You can get constant voltage and current outputs from some of the terminals. You can get waveforms from some of the other terminals. Now let's go take a look at using the EE board to apply voltage and current to some simple circuits and run some tests on our devices using that EE board. The EE board has a number of different power supplies on board. I won't talk about any of the time varying waveforms. At the moment, I'll restrict myself to talking about constant voltages and, by inference, constant currents. Now, there are two 
variable voltage supplies, VP plus and VP minus. VP plus has three 